Hello, Mr. Mailer here, online math teacher, and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be continuing our video series on trigonometry, and in particular, we're going to be looking at the addition and subtraction formulas and how you can prove them. So if you find this video helpful, consider hitting the like button and subscribing. Now let's go. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start by proving my difference or my subtraction formula, if you will, for cosine. And then from here, this is going to be the hard work. Everything else will fall nice and easy, just like any other proving an identity problem you might do. So to kick this off, let's look at this picture I have here to begin with. So I have two triangles drawn in this picture. One triangle, I start by opening up this angle in standard position A, and one angle A minus B. So that's my red and my green rays. Well, when I measure to the, when I have my blue ray and I look at the angle from that blue ray to my red ray, that's going to be an angle of A minus B if I have this ray be my blue ray, be angle B. And similarly, the angle from in standard position from the positive x axis to my green arrow is also going to be A minus B, how I've set this up. So this has created two triangles I'm going to look at. And if I'm living on the unit circle, which I'm going to for the sake of this problem, um, I know my coordinates on the outside of the unit circle can be expressed in terms of cosine of an angle for the x-coordinate and sine of an angle for the y-coordinate. So when I look at, at all the points on the outside of my unit circle that correspond to where these rays intersect the unit circle, I'm looking at cosine of the angle, sine of the angle. And I set up the angles so I have, have them in terms of A's and B's. Now, why these two triangles are important is because of the following. I end up with my two triangles, which I've separated out from my diagram. They have this same angle of A minus B and two legs that are both equal to 1. That tells me that these are similar triangles. And in particular, that's important because it means this purple dotted line is going to be the same length as my gold dotted line. So those two lengths are going to be the same. Now, you can see I've labeled my coordinates in the plane of, the point of those endpoints for that segment that's purple and gold. If they're both the same length, then I should be able to apply the distance formula to find the length of my purple segment and the length of my gold segment. And I've done this just here. So I have that the following two square roots, these radicals should be equal. Now, since they're equal, their squared should be equal. So I can actually eliminate these square roots I have over top of them. So what's inside of them needs to be equal. Here's where we get clever. I am going to fully square out and then simplify the left-hand side of this equality and then the right-hand side of this equality to see what I have. So I've expanded out my left-hand side and now I'm going to make a few observations. I notice that I have a cosine squared of A in my equation and I also have a sine squared of A. Well, I have the Pythagorean identity cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta is equal to 1 for any angle theta. So I can replace my cosine squared A and my sine squared of A by a 1. I can then repeat this same thing with a cosine squared of B and a sine squared of B. So I'm going to add another 1 here. And then I just have my minus 2 cosine A cosine B and my minus 2 sine A sine B left. And this is as far as I'm going to go with the left-hand side right now. So now I'm going to do the same thing I just did with my right-hand side. And now that I've expanded that out, all I have uh, that I can notice is I have my cosine squared of A minus B and I have a sine squared of A minus B. So again, by the Pythagorean identity, cosine squared of an angle plus sine squared of an angle being equal to 1, I can replace this with 1. So here's where things get interesting. I've simplified my left-hand side independently of my right-hand side and my right-hand side independently of my left-hand side. That's fine. 
So now I'm going to set these two sides equal to each other. Since I already knew they were equal to each other earlier from my distance formula. So now that I've done that, I'm going to just do some basic algebra. If I subtract 2 from both sides, I can get rid of my 2's out front here. That's fine. I'm just subtracting both sides by a constant. I'm not changing anything in a bad way. Then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And this will allow me to cancel out the remaining 2's as well as change some signs. And if I, once I do that, it will leave me with the following which is exactly the formula I claimed right at the top of the page. So it takes a good bit of work to get this first one, but you can prove it using things you learned in geometry as well as some of your Pythagorean identities. Now, here's where I promise things go much smoother from here. This is all the heavy lifting we need. Now, we can use this identity we just found as well as some other common identities to be able to prove the rest of these. So, how are we going to do that? I'm going to start out with my left-hand side in my new equation to get cosine of A plus B here. And I'm going to rewrite this so it looks like subtraction. The way I'm going to do that is cosine of A minus negative B. Well, I know the subtraction formula. We just proved that. So I'm just going to apply it. And I have the following. Now, I have some negatives inside my trig functions. To deal with those, you can always move these negatives outside knowing your even and odd identity. So using the identities which I've written to the side here, my cosine of negative B acts as if the negative isn't even there. And my negative inside that sine of B gets pulled out in front as a negative and goes away inside, leaving me with the right hand side that I wanted. So I've proved my addition subtraction for identity for here. Now, let's move on to sine of A plus B. To prove this one, I'm just going to use another common identity to be able to write sine in terms of cosine. And that is my cofunction identity that says sine of an angle is just a shift of cosine of an angle. That's all a cofunction identity says. So I'm going to take my sine of A plus B and now write it in terms of cosine using this cofunction identity. From here, I'm going to say, well, which identity do I want to apply in addition or subtraction for a cosine? Well, to make my life easy, I'm going to apply the following. I'm going to apply the subtraction formula, but I'm going to group pi over 2 minus a together because then it's going to look a little bit like my cofunction identity I started with by applying. So I'll be able to take this later on and put some cosines and sines back in terms of sine or cosine. So here's what I get when I apply my subtraction identity. And from here, I'm going to apply the cofunction identity. I'm going to apply the same identity I did before to rewrite cosine of pi over 2 minus a as cosine of a and I'm going to apply a second cofunction identity that says sine of pi over 2 minus theta is the same thing as cosine and that will replace my sine of pi over 2 minus a as a cosine of a. and sorry here I just noticed right here that's a sine of a my bad but once I've done this this is equal to the right hand side that I claim the identity is. So we now have our addition formula for sine. Well, now that we have an addition formula for sine, we can find a subtraction formula as well. And to do that, we're going to use the same trick as before. When I start with my left hand side of sine of a minus b. I'm going to write this as sine of a minus, or sorry, plus negative b. So I'm just being clever to write this in terms of my addition formula we just found. And now I'm going to apply my addition formula to get the following. And again, now I have some negatives inside my trig functions. 
I can just apply my even and odd identities to peel those negatives out. I can effectively ignore the negative inside cosine because of my even identity for cosine. And I can take out that negative from inside of sine by the odd identity that says tack it on out in front of sine to leave me with the following, which is equal to that right hand side I claim above, proving this identity. So now we've dealt with all our addition subtraction formulas for sine and cosine. We can move on to tangent. So first we'll deal with the addition formula for tangent. Now, nor now I always say you start with a more complicated sign. Addition inside is what makes the left-hand side more complicated here. Even though it's nice and compact, it is more complicated. So I'm going to start with the left-hand side. And I'm going to break this up with the quotient identity that says tangent of an angle is the same thing as sine of the angle divided by cosine of the angle. From here, I'm now going to apply my addition formula for sine and cosine to the numerator and denominator to get... Now, here's where I need to be clever. The difference between tangent and this is tangent is sine over cosine. So I'm going to be clever. I'm going to get rid of a few things and I'm going to look to this bottom left hand term to be able to do that. If I want to erase this and make that a one, I need to divide by that value itself. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 divided by cosine of A times cosine of B each. And when I do that, I obtain the following. Now, I'm going to cancel things and apply quotient identities in the same step here to save time. So I have some cosine B's that cancel, some cosine A's that cancel. My cosine A's, cosine B's cancel, and here's everything canceled. Now I notice I'm going to be left with a sine of A over cosine A, a sine of B over cosine B, everything canceled to be one here, another sine of A over cosine A, and a sine of B over cosine B. So I'm going to have a lot of quotient identities that I can replace these by either tangent of A or tangent of B, and I'm going to do that to obtain proving my addition formula for tangent or sorry my subtraction my addition formula for tangent now for my subtraction formula it's going to be similar and this should be a minus sign right here so you can just picture that there i'm going to pretty much follow the same process as before so i'm going to do left hand side to start and apply a quotient identity and then the addition then subtraction formula now and again once I apply my subtraction identity, I'm going to use the same clever trick to ask how can I make this bottom left hand corner be equal to 1. And that's going to be by multiplying the numerator and divider and denominator by 1 divided by cosine of A times cosine of B to leave me with the following where I can now cancel and apply my quotient identities to leave me with the following which is the right hand side which I claimed was my identity. So we have now proved all of the addition subtraction formulas. Now, I, this is a lot of proofs and a video, but I hope you realize that the only one that really is tricky is this first one, and everything else is just clever applications of other identities you should already be familiar with. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit the like button and have an awesome day.